right, fair enough. <laughs> and they're like, they're not really sure how to how to handle that. But meanwhile, Molly, you enter the cafeteria. Alright, so first thing Molly does, she walks over the anime table and kind of just leaves him a note. Alright. Yeah, I get it. Open it, what does it say? It pretty much simply says, I'm sorry, in pink font on very nice stationery. The O in sorry is a heart. Yes. Aww, that's very, that's very mature of you, Molly. Aww. And then she realizes that maybe she can get some more information if she sits closer to the goth kids table, which is happens to be the choir chicks. And since none of them really talk, she just kind of sits there, puts out her lunch, and pretends to read a book, and then eavesdrops on them. Alright, roll dark to eavesdrop. Oh, I forgot. Lazarus and Samson are not there. They're somewhere else. They just they're not out. here. They're not here today. I'm not going to delete them because it's going to be too much of a bother to put <laughs> them back in. Just pop them off screen. There we go. Yeah. All right. All right. Either you can listen really hard and then you'll feel you'll be drained, or you can just listen and hear some stuff, but not all of it. And what does Drain do? Uh, it doesn't say. It's just you have to do stuff to, to you have to rest. Just feel really tired. Yeah. Hmm. I'll listen really hard. All right. The thing about most of the conditions in this game is that they don't really do anything. They're just <laughs> something that you should be like acting towards. Yeah, yeah. It's just a it's a it's a way that you have to act um, when you role play. All right. So you listen really hard. Um, while looking intently at your science book, and uh, and you hear Echo and and Velvet talking, and f well, they start out just talking about how Echo is going to go with Cliff to the party um, on Saturday, and and uh, Velvet's like, "Do you like him?" And Echo's like, "I mean, I think so. I think it'll be fun." And and Velvet's like, "Yeah, you're going to be finally in with the cool kids. The cutest boy in school likes you. I told you this would work." <laughs> And then she's like, "Yeah, I guess I shouldn't. I shouldn't have doubted so much the ritual. I, I just, you know, I feel. I don't know if we did the right thing, though. I mean, don't you think I could have done this on my own?" And Velvet's like, "You know how we were before. There's no way we we could have any of us could have done this on our on our own. We needed, we needed, the we need the help. Uh, and now, you know, now our lives are going to be so much better." Um, all because, all because of Orville. Oh, she just opened up a pretty big box. Yup. Can I- Unraveling the mystery. Can I do one more roll or would that be too much to ask for? No, that's, that's all that they say during lunch. Okay. I was about to think, um, maybe the roll to see if they're still a human? Oh, if they're human? Yeah, if there's a human or there's something else that they're hiding. I guess that's also a dark check, so roll, roll dark to, to see if they're human. See if you can sense any magic coming from them. But, but also, just Echo and Velvet are here. Samson and Lazarus are not, so you're only checking those two. Alright. Oh, okay, so you, you don't feel any magic uh, coming off. Like, they don't have any powers. They're, ju they're just human. Hmm. They, right, then... they have been affected by magic, but they do not have powers. Hmm, that's interesting. Molly kind of digs her face deeper into the book. Alright. Molly's, like, taking notes and, like, drawing lines between boxes and circling things. She's very, on the graphing paper, she's very organized. Of course, graphing paper. <laughs> All right. Next, Annika, you enter the lunchroom. Okay, I do. I, I do kind of need some advice from the table, just kind of girl things. So, uh, Torlon, uh, how yeah. long should I wait before officially apologizing to try to patch things up? Is it too soon? I feel like any other girl until someone forces to, you never do. Well, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I I I I would like to have things patched up before the party, because the 
Yep. Why don't you uh, roll to hold steady versus being angry at Tiffany? Oh, yeah, okay. All right, so you you are above this. You are above these these emotions, and really, you you resolve that you just need to you need to do whatever it takes to make sure that your plans go go the right way. So you're willing to just act however you need to to get them to do what you want. So I uh, can I use that role and kind of figure out if it's a good time to be contrite. Well, not really contrite, but to, to, you know what I mean. Um, Honestly, your your best shot is just to admit that you're wrong and apologize. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. I just yeah, I'm walk just up kind to of... them and make a manipulate check, and then I'll I'll t- I'll I'll say it for you if you can't figure out exactly what a girl would say in this situation. Okay, that's my second eleven. All right, so you you walk up and and Tiffany's like. <laughs> Um, but then you say, look, Tiffany, I'm sorry. I was wrong. I'll let you deal with your your own business from now on. And because you're my friend, and we're still friends, right? You say, like, sniffling a little bit. And, And Tiffany's like, oh, of course we're still friends. Okay. And everybody gives everybody a hug, and then we're all back to the way it was before. And I make uh, I make meaningful eye contact with Lily in a good job kind of way. All right, Lily smiles at you. Also, Dane is here. <laughs> For some reason, <laughs> I, I hope Dane was just watching that entire thing. Yeah, no, that's what he does. Taking um, pictures. He's, he's he's gonna go up to you and be like, "Hey, Annika, so you're going to the party? Do you do you have a date yet?" Let's see, how can I do this diplomatically? Uh, I think really, you know, for this kind of thing, all of us girls are kind of being each other's dates. All right, roll to shut him down. Oh, what is that Oh, wait, mean? I'm sorry, that's the, that's the wrong button. Uh, instead of being minus one, it should be uh, plus three, I think. So that seven should be an 11. All right, so um, you can either give him a condition or gain a string on him. I'll take the string. All right, so you know that Dane has a crush on you, but you successfully are like, no, no, you know, wouldn't be appropriate. And he's like, oh, okay, I I guess. I'll see you there. I'm not crushing him or anything like that. I just don't think it's a good time. It's like, well, I'll see you there, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. I'll see you there. Yeah, he says, trying to look cool. Alright, finally. Cliff. Hi. Cliff, what you enter lunch. What is lunch today? Um, today is pizza day. Oh, man, yeah. Alright, so I, I get my pizza. pizza. And I go over to my usual table. Right on the edge of the map. Right on the edge of the map. Because I love it when pods are on the edge of the map. Let me tell you! I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Hi, Lul. Hi. Lul just, Lul, Lul just like, <laughs> looped around. He, he hit the left edge. I'm looking at you. He's excited about Calvin Ball. He's doing laps in the cafeteria. <laughs> Calvin Ball! I love Calvin Ball! Yeah, go chips! Let, not letting that die. Um, so you sit down, and Matilda and Jezebel are there, and, um, Matilda's like, Okay, Cliff, I have been thinking, and I think Alright, so I opened the locker, and I found stuff. What? (laughs) (laughs) So, I put out, I don't put out uh, Clarence's wallet, because that's sort of like, that's not really pertinent. But I put down the folder, and the, the two vials. And I say, I think we should go to Forsyth with this. I think this is pretty big. Whoa. And they're looking, and, and Matilda immediately grabs one of the vials and looks at it, like, really close <laughs> to her face. Bad. And is like, is this blood? This is totally blood. When I went to the doctor and they had to take blood, this is what it looked like. Just just be careful with it. 
<laughs> and and Jezebel is going to uh, look at the papers. Um, are you opening the folder, or are you just, like, putting it on the table? Uh, I'm putting it on the table and letting, like, Jezebel and Matilda decide if they want to look at it. All right, so she's going she's gonna to carefully open the manila folder and pull out the documents inside um, and sort of spread them in front of her, um, making sure, you know, there's not anything... There's not anything that should be covered up, and she looks at the the photos immediately, and she's like, "Whoa, is these? So this looks like it's, uh, you know, it, well, it looks, she looks at Cliff, and she's like, it looks like this is a picture of Echo, and a picture of her from last year, and all the other kids she hangs out with." Uh huh. So so yeah, you mentioned that like something was different about them this year. Is this? Is this that? I guess she she throws you the picture across the table and she's like, "Yeah, this is what they looked like last year. They they, they you know before they were all goth." And uh, and you you look at the photo and it is a photo of uh, the four uh, five five people playing um, playing. Oh man, animal. they would they would be settlers of Catan. Ooh. And uh, it had to be it had to be even more obscure um, <laughs> than magic. Uh, Settlers of Catan. I don't know. They might be even. Um, and uh, they they have anime shirts. Um, one of them has a Naruto headband. Um, they you know they're they're at school uh, in a in a, a school setting, um, but you know it must be the old the old building. And uh, they all, a lot of them have gla- have glasses, and um, Echo's hair is like gross and and out of control more, and and Samson's hair is all greasy, and he has acne and big glasses, and Velvet also has big glasses, and um, and then and then there's one kid that like, whoa, who's this guy? He's the ugliest motherfucker you ever seen. He is the alpha nerd. Um, he's got he's got acne. He's got big glasses. He's sweaty. His hair is disgusting. He's got you I mean you can see the stains in his pits Ugh. pit stains. Ugh. Um, his ass is falling out of his pants. Oh, I guess he's <laughs> and the then... one with the Naruto headband. And yeah, he's got a Naruto headband, and then next to him, you see um, a thinner-looking Orville. Huh. So, I'm really not sure what to do with this information, so I just put the picture down and say, definitely think we should talk to Forsyth about all this. Yeah, definitely. Matilda is still still looking at the vial of blood, <laughs> and she's like, "Cliff, do you think this has any magic powers?" I bet Give me it totally that. does. <laughs> so I snatch it away. Jezebel, 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 look at the vial of blood. Use your magic on the vial. Look and see if it's magic. <laughs> and Jezebel's like, "Um, I guess." Um, and she takes out a book and she's gonna she's gonna roll dark. Hold on. All right, so she's like, "Yeah, I if this is vampire blood, then it could be a a very powerful magical reagent." But I don't know what Damien would use this for. Why and until this like blood on him? And Matilda's like, why would he have regular blood on him when it's all gross and sticky cuz it's been sitting there in the warm for like a week? <laughs> Good point. It's gross. Why, why did he just leave blood in the lock? Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't make sense, Cliff. Doesn't make sense. Well, I mean, he was kind of a chump. You're oh, a now chump. he's a chump. Yeah, now because, he's a chump. Because the DM told you out, out of character that you weren't going to get any repercussions. <laughs> so now he's a chump. <laughs> I see how it is. Well, I haven't gotten wait. repercussions for the last two or three sessions, so I'm pretty you confident in my ability to call Clarence's him a chump. Clarence's revenge episode. <laughs> <laughs> now Clarence, I'm buddy, kidding. I got your visa. <laughs> and then he gets punched in the face. 
Uh, so, so like, well, so they're like looking at each other and they're like, man, it looks like while we were, we were watching Damien, Damien was watching the, the goth kids and, uh, and uh, the, the other document, one of the other documents is a scanned, uh, page from, from a book, uh, that must, must have been from a library and he wasn't able to take it. So he just scanned it, made a copy and, uh, at my school, it you details had to pay five cents for a copy. Well, he's you know he's he's rich, so yeah, he he's made swimming lots in of copies. Nickels. Yeah, he's swimming in nickels. <laughs> um, and he uh, he made a copy of some pages from a book describing a ritual. Um, it's photocopied handwriting, so it's a little difficult to to understand uh, what, what all the stuff that's on there. But you see a circle with a with a pentagram in the middle, and uh, you see. Uh, a diagram of how people should sit in the in the circle. Um, there are some dark stains on the photocopy, like the the stains were were copied along with the, the paper. So the paper that it was copied from had some stains on it. Huh. Um, and uh, Matilda immediately says, "Oh, those must be blood stains." Uh, of course, and, sure. Uh, that's that's what they are. And. Uh, and so it's but it's, it's basically it, it details um, how to do this ritual, how you should sit, and it has a diagram of four for four people sitting at you know, one person sitting at each point of the star, and four people there are arrows from those people t- into the fifth person, and then that then there's like lines drawn around that person like the power then and then it's like the power the transfer of power to one person. And then, uh, and then there's also a side note that uh, you know this is a very powerful ritual, and in order for it to work, you need considerable uh, energy, and that the you know the one of the people in the group has to be killed in order for this to succeed. Well, I mean that goes with uh, Molly's ghost story. So, hmm. So, uh, so Matilda's gonna look at you and she goes, so do you have any idea what happened? Uh, well, if, if Orville is a ghost, which I'm guessing, I'm gonna trust Molly's opinion on this He's one. pretty much a ghost. He's, he's a, pr- he's pretty ghosty. Uh, that, this looks like, um, this is how he died? Matilda takes the paper from you and looks at it, and she's like, "So they killed him?" Uh, look. Well, I mean, in a way, they sort of sucked his life energy out. They didn't kill him in the traditional sense. Do you think that that's that's why they changed? See, uh, man, it it doesn't make sense that they would all change. Um because only one person could actually get the full amount of power from the life force, but... Ugh, man, I don't know why it would turn them all into goth kids. The worst kind of curse. This is this is really weird. We, yeah, we really need to talk to Forsyth about this. Let's... You, do me a favor and roll dark to read, the, understand the documents, like, to read through the, all of them. All right. You um, you note that because the the death thing was like a side note, um, that it's it's this this side note was under a list of of precautions that could prevent um, basically uh you you notice that that this 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 the part where they talk about killing killing someone it's to kill someone as a scapegoat basically so that. Uh, none of the other ones in the group have to have to suffer, basically. Oh, huh. So um, there's also, also it's so so there's a second. I should have said this. Um, there's there's the there's the one. Let's say there's there's one uh, diagram where all the energy is going into one person, and there's another diagram where from four people to a different person, like where there were white white arrows before, there are now black arrows going to a different person in the group, and then that person's like little circle is, is shaded in. Oh, okay. So this is all... Well, I got an eight. So, so it's, it's a all... power transfer. It, it's clouded and confusing. So it yeah, it's it, 
looks like something like that, but I can't really... Uh, I, this is all way above my pay grade, is, is the idea. I just I just set a kid on fire. That that's the extent of my experience here. <laughs> uh, also, do you I leveled know, do up. You le oh, nice. Uh, so do you tell the I'm others to? to... Uh, I just want to mention that I'm taking the chosen move, take the blow. Uh, when you leap into the way and take the blow instead of someone else, roll with volatile. On ten and up, uh, you take the harm instead of them, but reduce it by one. On seven to nine, you take the harm instead of them. Okay. Um, so, so does Cliff, does Cliff ask Jezebel or Matilda to look at any of this? Particularly Jezebel, because she's magic? Um, yeah, I'll ask Jezebel if she can make sense out of these diagrams. And she's like, let me take a look. And she looks at it, and, uh, and she's like, so, if this person that got all the negative energy is Orville, then who's the person who got all the positive energy... I don't really know about that one. I'm not I'm not quite sure. And she's like, this is we have to we have to figure out which one of them has this power because it looks like only one of them has any kind of significant power, but the other ones, well, I mean, look at this picture. It looks like they used it to make themselves better. Hmm. Man, this is this is some Pretty confusing stuff. All right. Anyone else? Nope. That's all of lunch. Anyone else nope. have any more lunch things you want to do? Uh, I eat Annika. Oh, Annika continued to pack her own lunch, and it is business Cliff. casual meal. Cliff rolled to hold steady when you bite into the pizza, and it is way <laughs> too hot. Do you keep the pizza in your mouth, or do you spit it out? Oh man, you 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 make a face. I make a face, but I chow down on that pizza. You successfully eat the pizza, even though it's way too hot. I successfully a pizza. <laughs> you successfully a pizza. Oh. What I what I was hoping was that you'd fail it, and then we roll volatile for how many squares you spit it out, because I was counting how many squares you were away from Echo. <laughs> yeah. No, the the holding volatile would be uh, if I barf like Vara does. <laughs> 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 no, no. That was just a joke. Oh, um, how did the enemies react to the note? Oh, do you, um, they, they look at it, and they're, they're happy, and they're like, oh, oh, yeah. Aww. So then, as you're, as you're leaving lunch, let's have, not Entropy, because she's the Yandere one. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what that means! Buttercup. Uh, Sunrise comes up to you, and she says, Oh, um, Molly? I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I'm you, sorry, too. Are you sure? I was a total bitch to you all. Oh. And she's like, you know, I, it must be hard with your mom and all. She's like a goddess and everything. <laughs> um... But, but I mean, that was really nice of you to apologize, and so you can, I mean, if you want to hang out with us sometimes, I guess that would be okay. Maybe. She kind of, like, roses back of her neck. Maybe. Okay. And then she, like, floats away. I'd like to compare and contrast that, that apology to Annika's. Oh, well, it's kind of a different social strata because you have the really popular kids versus the crazy anime club. <laughs> Everyone crazy is the anime, anime club. club. <laughs> the, main, the main plot point of this story wrote, revolves around the existence or non-existence of an anime club. The entire <laughs> point of this story, the whole reason we're doing this for you, Chad, is so you know, never do an anime club. Just, just don't. Yeah, this is all about anime clubs. Don't, don't start an anime club. It's, it's a bad <laughs> idea. All Very right, bad. so, um... I feel like there's not a lot of stuff left to do in the day. So do you want to do you want to go ahead and go to the party or well, we well, can after school. We could either Forsyth. do the rest of the day. Yeah, we let's do the rest of the day and then next time we'll do the party because we've already been going for 2 hours. All right. Yeah. Um, so 
is anything specific going to happen within these next classes? Because I'm not, like, it's getting real close to my bedtime. I might just bow out if it's just classes. Oh, um, let's see. Does Lowell have anything to do the rest of the day? I guess not, because, because, uh, Francis hasn't cast his spell yet, so you wouldn't be feeling any effects of that. Um, do you, do you have a scheduled beatdown for Fran- for Fenris <laughs> today? With no uh, I, I figured, yeah, probably not. Alright, so there's no scheduled beatdown, so then you, you should be okay. Okay. If you wanna, you wanna go to bed. Yeah, I'm probably gonna. Because I guess it's shortly. ten for you. Yeah, yeah. Normally, I'd be up way later, but I've been working like seven in the morning, so I'm getting kind of tired. All right. Good night, Cowbox. Good night, Cowbox. That was a uh, friend of the show, Cowbox. Everyone. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> da 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 da. <laughs> All right, Pogs. Let's go to classes. Let's scoot. Whoops. Sorry, Annika. Oh, no. You just Sorry, died. Molly. God, you're terrible at this. Just standing on everyone. <laughs> All right. For the afternoon, your choices are English and math. Uh, Mathematics! English. Alright. With with no Vera and Lowell, everyone is free to sit in the back of the calculus room. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Sweeney is going to sit in the back. I think Jack Sweeney he's should like, get his, own chair, his old chair he's back. Like, I think he like, should be pretty ah. pumped about getting his old chair back. For once, nobody's pushing him around. Sit right there, yeah. He's like, ah, oh, this is great. All this right. is my butt and everything. All right, so Francis, you sit down next to uh, Dexter, the nerdiest guy in a school full of nerds. Oh, good. Um, and he. He is obviously not going to talk to you, but you have the option of talking to him. You also see Chevron Murphy, the uh, enemy of of Tiffany. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> so I mean, you I... might you might be high. I don't know. It's too many things probably to pay attention to. Uh, he's not worried about them. He's more still thinking about the whole. Out, cult, fairies, ghosts, and all that. So he he's perfectly yep. happy to sit back and not do anything. Do you do you want to do any any research in your own like magic books or something like that that you happen to have with you? Um. Uh, uh, look up look up things that result in ghosts. I actually know a couple things that result in ghosts. So he's not sure. If, uh, Orville's dead, it might just be astral projection or something. Oh. Ooh. That seems like something Orville would be into. To, to you know, be with his waifu on the astral plane. As they say. Um, but, so... But I can, uh... No, this isn't uh, Beyond Two Souls. This is like <laughs> when we are talking about machine kin before. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I'll just... I actually think about the 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 fairy king summoning because that's something he'd probably know the least about, and oh, he still no. doesn't. <laughs> don't summon David uh, Bowie. <laughs> all you, yeah, you don't you don't get anything about it other than it sounds bad. Fair it sounds enough. like trouble. Uh, so Molly, you sit next to Matilda, um, and Matilda sees you, and she's like, "Oh, hey, so." Um, what's your info? What are, what are these deets? It's, deets. It, it's a lot of information. I think everyone needs to hear this. She still is pretty freaked out, too. Alright, she's like... It's about... Just give me a hint. We got... Oh! Uh, Cliff found a bunch of documents that that the vampire guy was keeping... Uh, that that talk about 
the cult and their activities, and he's got this picture of a ritual where, like, they transfer this power from, like, the people in the group to, like, this one guy, and there's, like, they transfer the goodness to one guy and then the badness to another guy, and then that guy dies, and that's what we think happened to Orville, but then why, and who has all the power? And then all sorts of red flags go off in her head. Oh... Oh no, 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 no. And she's, she's kind of like connecting the dots. Alright, and, and uh, Matilda's like, what's up? I think I know what's going on. You do? I I think I do. I, 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 she bites her little lip, she looks really nervous about it. No, not in front of them. You know, she points to the class, you, you know. And, and so from Matilda's the regular like, people. Matilda's like, oh, okay. 